how to build a deep, deep, deep romantic connection. Number one, stop texting. And I have to drill this through your ads. I have to. I have to. Because I know majority of you are texting addicts. And I, I'm telling you, it is preventing you from building these deep connections. I'm going to keep saying it until you're tired of me saying it, until you realize your the errors in your ways and you make a change. You need to stop texting, okay? And when I say stop texting, I really mean stop texting as a way to get to know people. Stop texting as a way to keep a conversation going, okay? It is not helping you get to know that person any better. It is not building a connection with that person, whether romantic or platonic anymore when you're texting them a lot versus texting them a little, because the reality of it is you will never truly know who someone is over text. Okay. And the reason that is because you might be like, oh, well, you know, let me ask you guys, how many of you felt, be honest with me, you can get to know someone over text. And I know some of you guys feel like, oh, I can get to know someone over text. I feel like I get to know someone over text. That's fine right? I want to give you this example and then tell me how you feel about this example, okay? Some of you guys that have felt like that before, okay? So imagine I have you in a huge room, okay? Uh, awesome, amazing, just, just blank room, okay? Like a studio. And in comes walking a hundred guys, okay? A hundred guys to choose from, okay? Actually, let's even say you don't know what any of those guys look for look like. You just know there's a hundred guys in the room. Okay. So you can't see any of their faces. You can't see their body. You can't see if they have tattoos or if they're good looking or if they're tall or if they're short. You just know there's a hundred other guys in a room behind a wall. Now I put up in front of you a hundred different pages that each one of those guys have handwritten. Okay. I told them to write a page about anything they want, whatever it may be. They can just write, write, just write. Any subject that they want, they write a page about it. We put it up. Now, I want to ask you, if I had 100 guys write a page, hand write a page, and I put it in front of you, would you be able to determine who you think is the person that is the best romantic match for you based on a hundred guys writing on a page. But if you can identify that the words on a page or the words on a screen cannot help you better identify if someone would be a good romantic partner to you, then you're also identifying that texting doesn't really give you the true concept of who someone is. Because when someone's texting you, it's the same thing. It's just words on a screen. All you have is the representation of who the person is that is texting those words on that screen. And then you decipher that message through that context. Okay. And a lot of times the way you're deciphering that message is based on how you may or may not already feel about that person. So for example, if I have, you know, a million followers, right on Instagram and you know, I'm like the, a super famous YouTuber and I send you or a super famous rapper and I send you a message and I just go, um, yo, pull up to the club, girl. I'm going to be there at 1230, right? And I got a million followers and you listen to my songs all the time, right? And I send you, hey, pull up to the club, girl. I'm going to be there at 1230. You're prob you might respond. There's a good chance you might, or you might find it interesting at the very least that I were to message you, you might find it intriguing, but your response would be very different than if I was some average Joe who, you know what I mean? I had nothing to my name. I was just a random blank page. Right. And I said, Hey girl, pull up to the club at 1230. Right. Not say that you're a gold digger or anything like that, but it's natural that we are going to decipher the same message in different ways, depending on who we think it's coming from. Right. And there's multiple layers to when we're deciphering text messages, Instagram DMs, any type of messages. OK. There's actually about three layers to deciphering any message. OK. You got the first layer, which is your own perspective in life. OK. 
right? Because your perspective in life shapes how you're going to receive a message from someone, right? And your perspective is also going to shape the context in which you believe it's coming under, right? And then thirdly, you're reading the words on the screen, right? And deciphering what you think I feel like when I sent that message, if that makes any sense. So let me give you an example, right? If I send you a paragraph about, um, yo, you know, I just can't believe, I don't have no time for nothing no more. I'm just so busy. You know, I never get any time to myself. This, this sucks. I wish I could just take a break from life. Look, I never get to do anything that I want to do. I never get to have any fun anymore. Everything's about everyone else and da, da, da. And I just send you a whole long paragraph about me complaining. Now, if you've been in a relationship where your partner's been too busy or your partner hasn't wanted to, to be around you or you've been or you've been broken up with in your most recent relationship, What's going to happen is based on your perspective, right? You're going to read my message about not having any about me said that I sent you about saying, oh, I don't have any time for myself. I just want to take a break. I, I never get everyone wants me to do things. and I just want to be by myself and be you might take that as, oh, you don't like me or, oh, you don't want to spend time with me or, oh, you're getting bored of me, right? Because that's the particular way that you're deciphering my message through your perspective and through your experiences in life, right? You're putting it under a specific context based on your perspective and your, un and your understanding of what my perception was when I sent the message is all based around your perspective and your experiences, right? So you receive the message in the particular way based on your perspective, okay? Now, when I send the message, you receive it as, oh, I don't want to spend time with you. I'm bored of you. I'm done with you. I want to be single, all that good stuff. When I sent the message, I was genuinely stressed out and I really just wanted to get on my chest how things have felt overwhelming for me. But you see how easily based on your perspective, right, and the context that you feel the message is being sent under, it can drastically change how you receive the message versus how someone sent the message. And then you respond back to me, well, okay, if you don't want to spend time with me, just say that. Or if you want to break up, then just say that. And then I'm sitting there like, wait, what? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just, I've been really stressed about work, right? But you see how easy it is for over a text message for you to be confused about the meaning of things or you to get the wrong message, right? What is the wrong message for me versus what you perceive as the message I'm trying to send when I sent that message. My point being is that texting is a very confusing way to communicate with someone because you don't truly have all the context clues as to how they are saying what they're saying and what they really mean by what they're saying. Okay. Because we have evolved. I know you guys don't want to get into history here, but we have in biology, but we have evolved as human beings to read in on body language, the way people say things, right? Their voice, right? Their facial expressions, right? And situational context clues to understand um, what people really mean when they say something in particular, right? If we're driving in the car and you ask me, hey, uh, how do you feel about your ex? And I go, yeah, she's cool. I don't mind her at all, right? Versus you ask me in the car, Right. And we're driving and you say, how do you feel about my ex? I go. <sighs> I mean, yeah, she's. She's cool. Uh, I don't mind her. It's very different, right? It's a very different feeling, right? But the reason you know how that why that feels different is because you have so much more context right behind the words but you know right based on how you evolved and what you understand the world to be you know there's a difference right in the meaning based on all the other factors how i acted how i responded what my face told you what my body language was 
right? Even though the words are the same, the message is very, very different. Okay, right? And it's amazing how we have evolved like that to understand things that deeply, where someone, two people can say the exact same things and you can clearly receive the message very differently and know that they mean something very different. That's, some, that's the amazing part about life. So, but that's why I say you have to stop texting because if you're truly going to build a strong and deep connection with someone, especially a romantic connection, there's no way to truly do that over text because you'll never truly know the person, right, who is behind the messages. You won't truly know them, okay? And someone even said, oh, but you know, you can, you can learn facts. Can you really learn facts, right? Can you really learn facts? Because behind, behind a text message and behind the phone, a lot of people say a lot of things. And the most interesting part about that too, especially when you're in the beginning of a relationship, people tend to overestimate or underestimate certain qualities about themselves because they know they don't actually have to stand up to you and say it to your face. So people might, if they're giving you facts about themselves, right? might overestimate certain qualities that make them look better, right? And underestimate certain facts or qualities or traits that make them look worse. But the thing is, when you're texting, especially at the beginning, there's no way of actually verifying that. You know what I mean, right? When you're texting someone, you're trying to figure out all the information about them. Oh, how tall are you? Oh, I'm 6'3". And then you meet him and he's 5'10". Why, why, why would you lie? Why would you lie? I can, I can see that you're 5'10". But if you were in person with him and you asked him how tall are you, the chances of him lying saying that he's 6'3 would be a lot less because you can simply stand up and be like, I'm literally 5'9 and we're like the same height. What do you mean you're 6'3", right? I just want you guys to see how when you, when you fall in love too much with texting, it can become something very detrimental to your ability to build a real relationship with that person because you'll become too attached to the person that you want them to be or the person that you're projecting them to be over those text messages. The strategies that I'm giving you guys is a lot more is a lot better and a, a more efficient way to spend your time. Right? Because when you're trying to build a real connection with someone, you'll even more quickly be able to realize, no, this isn't it. This isn't what I want, right? In the process of texting, you'll waste a lot of time because everyone at the beginning will feel like the right person, right? Just like Marissa just said, by the time you meet up, you get a much better understanding of the vibe and the feeling that you get around someone and you can way more quickly know if, yeah, I want to be with someone like this or no, I don't want to be with someone like this. Over text, everyone feels the same. That's the problem, right? Everyone feels the same. Everyone feels like you're Prince Charming. Everyone feels like the person you're going to end up with because it's text, right? And because it's text, you don't have any real qualities or traits to go off of. You don't have any real emotions or feelings to go off of. So what do you get to do? You get to project those feelings onto them. You get to project those character traits onto them. You get to project those personality traits onto them. And they all feel like your perfect person until you meet them. Right? That's why I always say stop texting. Right. It is not helping you build deep romantic connections. It's actually making it so much harder because then you go into the the uh, relationship. Right. Or you go into the first meeting or the first date with so much bias. Right. You're literally washing your ability away to just sit down and be able to judge someone for who they are, not who you want them to be, because as you be keep on this texting conversation, trying to have all these deep conversations over text, trying to get to know them over text, you build up your idea of them. And if, if when you meet them in person, your idea of who you thought they were isn't in line with who they actually are, you will always be disappointed. You will always be disappointed because it's, it's truly, it's like, imagine if I uh, took you, imagine if I said, I'm going to take you 
to the most amazing five-star restaurant ever. It's got three Michelin stars. It's got a 5.0 rating on Google. It, everyone loves this place. It's all over social media. It's got the best food there. You don't worry about the name. You, you haven't heard of it, but this is going to be such amazing food. I promise you when you eat it, you're going to have an orgasm. You're just, your squirtle is going to squirt everywhere. Everything's going to be amazing. You're going to feel so good after you try this food from this restaurant. I promise you it'll change your life right? And I build it up and I build it up and I build it up and you're so excited. You're so, so excited for what this restaurant's going to taste like when you finally bite into that food and you eat it and you're like, eh, this is all right. Eh, I've had better. Eh, it didn't change my life, right? And it's not really necessarily about the real quality of the food because the food can even still be good. But because your expectation was through the roof, right? Anything that is not through the roof, that is not blowing your mind, feels like a letdown. Okay. And it's the same thing with texting. When you get into the habit of texting someone and then you feel like you know who they are, you feel like you know what their personality is like, you feel like you guys get along so well, you feel like you know what the vibe is like, right? It sets your expectations through the roof right? This is my person. This is who I'm going to be with. Oh my God, we're going to have such an amazing relationship. Oh my God, we're connecting so well. Oh my God, we have such amazing, great conversation. And then you go on that first date or you finally meet them or you finally spend some real quality time with them. And you're kind of like, oh, actually our conversation is kind of stale. Oh, actually he's a little bit awkward. Oh, actually he's got a weird twitch. Oh, actually he's a little bit shorter than I like a guy to be. Okay. And now, even if he's just being regular him, even if he's just being a normal flawed person, it's disappointing because your expectation was to meet the man, the Prince Charming that you've been reading on Wattpad and uh, reading in your smut books and reading and watching on your Disney movies. Number two, no app communication. We do not want you having low quality forms of communication, you will never be able to build a deep romantic connection with someone with all of these low quality forms of communication. And I know some of you are like, but I want to talk to my person all the time. I want to talk to him 24 seven. I want to text him. I want to call him. I want to message him. I want to, I want to do this. I want to do that. Yeah. You can, you can talk to your person all the time. Just go see him all the time and you'll be fine. You ain't going to build no deep romantic connection by sending him a bunch of IG memes. You ain't going to build no deep romantic connection by Snapchatting him for 365 days in a row. You ain't going to build no deep long lasting connection by uh, sending him a couple paragraphs over text message. Okay. All of these apps, you ain't going, you ain't going to build no deep connection with him by, uh, you know, seeing him update his WhatsApp status all the time. Okay. I know about how everyone uses everything. Okay. None of these apps are helping you build a deep, real connection with that person. And the problem to see, this is why this is so important is because a lot of you guys are stuck in a position where you're wondering why you can't decipher good guys from bad guys, why you can't decipher people who you should be in a relationship versus the ones that you shouldn't be, why you can't determine, Hey, how can't, how come I couldn't tell that this guy wasn't the right partner for me? How come, how come I couldn't tell that this would have been a bad relationship? How come I, it, it took me this long to realize he was a horrible guy? Well, you weren't building a real connection with him. You had all this stuff that was like fluff, right? All this stuff that was like the, the, uh, what you thought was real but you were actually just filling your time. You were actually just bored. You weren't having any real conversation. You didn't really know the real person, right? But then as time went on, you began to learn the real person and you realized most of the stuff that you were concerned with before was really a facade. Do you understand, right? 
the same way with texting, how you become addicted to the texting and then, you know, you start thinking, oh, well, this person is just like this and I think he's probably just like this. And then you meet them and you're disappointed. It's the, same. the apps are the same thing, more of the same. But the apps are even worse because the apps trick you even more into thinking you're having even more conversation with that person because you got a lot of you couple it with the texting. And then you feel like, oh, my God, like I'm messaging him on two places at once or three places. Some of you are effing addicts. You got the Snapchat streak going with him, right? Then you're sending him Instagram memes and reels. You're sending him TikTok videos, right? And then you're messaging him over text or messaging him over WhatsApp. How many of you do that with the guy that you're talking to or a guy that you like? You text him, you Snapchat him, you send him Instagram reels and memes, and then you send him TikTok videos, right? Or some combination of some combination of those, whatever your app of choice is, because I know some of you who are a little bit older, you like using Instagram more. Some of you are a little bit younger, you like using TikTok more. And, you know, some people use WhatsApp, some people don't, right? Some combination of that where you're either talking to him over text and talking to him on Snapchat or you're talking to him over text and then you're talking to him on, on Instagram or sending, sending back and forth somewhere on at least two places. Get off of the apps. There are low quality forms of communication. If you really think an Instagram meme or reel is so funny that you want to send it to him or like show him, save it. When you see him in person, show him all the ones that you've been meaning to show him. And then you guys can laugh about it together and maybe have a conversation about it together. Okay. It'll be a cool conversation starter. Don't do it over the phone. Okay. Because it just becomes an addiction. And you guys feel like both of you, you both feel like you're talking all the time, but you're not actually talking all the time. You're not actually building a relationship all the time. You're only really building a real relationship when you spend some time in person. Okay. It's the, uh, it's the God honest truth. There's no, there's no way around it. And number three, now we're getting juicy. Make it comfortable. Okay. So this is now that you've done the process, getting rid of the texting, getting rid of the, the, the Snapchat and the Instagram and all that good stuff. Now you're finally focused on how you're going to treat the real person in real life, because this is how you build the real connection that's deep and long lasting with them. Okay. You make it comfortable. So what do I mean by that? You have to bring an enthusiasm and excitement to the relationship or to the talking stage, to the date, right? Where you have the mindset that you want to get to know as much as humanly possible about that person. You're so intrigued and interested in learning about them, him in this specific situation, about him on this date and in general, that you're fascinated by just sitting down, asking questions and listening, right? And everything he says is like, feels like it's magical because you're finally getting to understand him more. When you approach the date, right? Or the person or the relationship with that mindset, what's going to happen is something very interesting. He's going to mirror your excitement, right? And in the process of him mirroring your excitement, he's going to become more and more comfortable sharing with you because he's going to feel like you enjoy hearing him talk. Okay. Now, some of you might be like, but you know, you're going to attract a narcissist if you do that, or you're going to attract someone who's super into themselves if you do that, or you're going <sighs> to, that's not the point of what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do here is set the precedent that a man will be very comfortable sharing with you and opening himself up to you. Cause this is the only way you're going to actually get to his heart. If he opens up to you. You're never going to get to a guy's heart by sitting around and talking about yourself. I'm sorry to tell you, okay? You're never going to get to a guy's heart by sitting around and telling him all of your sad stories, okay? The only way you're going to get to a guy's heart truly is by becoming his therapist, okay? I know it sounds old, but that's toxic. Why would you want to be your man there? Why would you want to be your this and that? You are a woman, and you're an amazing woman. 
You have so much capabilities when it comes to being emotionally intelligent, having your intuition, being in touch with your emotions and your feelings and all that good stuff, right? Men are stunted in that, most men, okay? Not every man's going to sit there and articulate their feelings like I do. I am like a, you know, I'm not real, okay? For majority of most men, it's going to be a struggle to sit around and articulate their feelings or to be able to just openly express how they feel or what they're thinking, right, out loud in a way that makes sense. So your superpower is being his therapist where he can actually get that out and feel good about talking about himself and his feelings and his problems and what he wants and his desires and all that good stuff that's going on in his mind. You help him make sense of that and he will, he will love you for that. You'll also build a lot deeper of a connection with him because you will, you will understand him better. You'll understand his mind better, right? Because I told you, like I said before, I know a lot of you guys are having trouble, first of all, with building real connections with guys because you're like, this, this guy just, you know, he used my squirtle and then he played me and then he disappeared, right? So you're having trouble building connections with guys, but you're also having trouble understanding what guys want or why they're, you know, doing the things that they do, right? You feel like you don't really understand how they think or what they need or what they want, right? And you're just living your life with all of this confusion, right? But if you become his therapist and you make him feel comfortable as possible sharing with you, you'll get a much better understanding of not just the guy you like, every guy you meet, you'll get a much better understanding of what he wants who he is and what he's about. You'll also, it'll also make it a lot easier for you to see through the fakers, right? And to be able to tell who the real ones are, right? So you always want to be approaching um, your relationships and, and these dates and these guys with this same mentality. You want to come to the table. I'm excited to get to know you. I'm excited to learn more about you. I'm excited to uh, genuinely, you know, understand you better. If you're not excited to actually get to know the person or understand them, then you probably shouldn't even be on that date in the first place. If you're coming to that date and you're like, I just want to sit here and talk about myself or I don't really find you that interesting. you're boring. I don't want to hear about you. I want to talk about me. If you come to the date and that's truly how you feel, you probably shouldn't be on that date. Because you probably don't like that guy. If you truly like someone, you should be interested in talking about them. Now, obviously, a guy who's also interested in you is going to ask you about you as well. And there's no, I'm not saying, oh, don't answer about you. Don't answer any questions about you. Don't let him ask any questions about you. I would definitely say talk about yourself. Answer questions about you. He's going to mirror your excitement as well. Remember that. So as you come to the table excited to learn about him, he likes you. He's also going to mirror that and be excited to learn about you as well. So I'm not saying, oh, don't talk to him about you or don't share anything about you or keep everything a secret, but just make sure in the process of you sharing about yourself, you do as much as you possibly can to shift the focus back where you're continuously still doing the job of understanding him and you don't go too far off into the deep end where now it's just all about you and you're only talking about you and you forgot to ask about him or, you know, be curious about him. OK, so that's why it's so important that you set the stage by making him comfortable talking to you. You're not going to build no deep connection with someone if the guy doesn't feel comfortable even talking to you or sharing with you in the first place. If you want a guy to feel close to you, you should let him talk extensively about himself. Even the guys who are shy and are like, oh, but, you know, I'm, I'm so shy about talking about the everyone likes talking about themselves you just have to get them opened up okay everyone is capable of doing that it's it's possible to get anyone talking you just have to warm them up the right way and you know ask them the right questions build rapport build trust and you can get someone talking the reason i know that right is because when a criminal tell me guys when a criminal goes to a police station right the criminal knows that he's being questioned by the police officer. The police officer knows that the criminal is uh, that the criminal knows that he knows that he's here to question him. Right. Everyone knows what they're there for. So why doesn't the police officer, as soon as the criminal sits down at the police station, just say, did you did you murder that guy on 79th Street? Yes or no. Did you do it? At, did you do it at 3 p.m. with the nine millimeter? Yes or no. Right. 
if both people know why they're there, why doesn't the police officer just come out and ask the most obvious question one time and then send him on his way? Because that's not how you get the truth out of people. Right? That's not how you get people talking. That's not how human beings work. Right? If I really want the truth out of someone, I sit them down, even if they know why we're there. I sit them down. I build rapport with them. I get them talking about themselves, their life, where they've been, what they like, what they dislike. Right? I build, I build a list of all my context clues. I understand, you know, what they're about. I ask them follow-up questions and follow-up questions to the follow-up questions, right? And I ask them a bunch of questions around the truth that I'm trying to extract until finally I stumble upon the truth indirectly, right? Because by the time, uh, you know, the police officer asked the criminal, hey, where were you at 3 p.m.? Oh, so you, uh, you usually don't work on Tuesdays, right, when, the, you know, this thing happened and also you know it was your uh your best friend that got you know that was unalived and so you guys were having a problem a week before like you said you guys had an argument and then he stormed out and and this and that da da da, da. and so you were where at 3 p.m exactly where he got unalived and you were doing what at three oh you guys had an argument a couple minutes before that uh, and you know what i mean and oh so and that blood was on the shirt and you gather the truth right by gathering all of these different contexts. Number four, create questions. Notice I said create questions. Notice I said create questions. Notice I said create questions. If you're truly serious about building a romantic, deep connection, deep romantic connection with someone, you need to spend some dedicated time, right? Writing your questions down so that when you get to the situation or you get to the date or you get to the whatever, right? You actually know and remember what to ask and how you wanted to ask it. I promise you, you guys might think it's silly, but trust me, when you go on a date with someone and you're like, oh, I had some questions that I wrote down that I wanted to ask you on my phone, right? Trust me, you might think, oh, they're going to think it's weird or whatever. They're going to think what well, they're going to think I'm a weirdo that I'm trying to trick them or whatever. No. What's going to happen is most people are going to be like, no, you're actually you're really invested in this. You're invested in our relationship. You're invested even more importantly in me. And what does it do? It feeds someone's ego where they're like, oh, my God, you're so invested in me that you wrote down questions in preparation for our date. Do I matter that much? Right. And what also ends up happening is they begin to feel an obligation to answer your questions because you wrote you took the time to write them down and present them to you on this date. So now I feel an obligation that, oh, my God, you actually took time outside of just us being here to ask me particular questions on this date. And they're like, well, yeah, I'll answer your questions. They feel flattered, and it's natural. Anyone would feel like that. You feel flattered that someone cares enough about you, little old you, that they would even be bothered enough to prepare questions for you for what you thought was a silly date. And just that fast, you stand out so much more to that person, and they also feel that much more obligated to answer your questions. The thing is, people, are, people become accustomed to just people not caring, right? So when you go on dates, people become accustomed to, oh, I go on a date with someone and they're not really invested in me. They don't really care about me. They're just kind of on this date because whatever. And they just kind of want to see how it goes. When you bring an enthusiasm with, no, I want to know you. No, I want to learn about you. People start to feel like, oh my God, do you think I'm special? You make me feel so special that you want to learn and understand me. But what also happens is they open up even more because they feel, right? Like, oh my God, you're really invested in me. This isn't just a date for free food for you. You came with questions prepared for me. Like, of course I'll answer your questions. That's awesome. Now they get to thinking, oh my God, the next date that we go on, I got to have some questions for her. People start to mirror your, your it's, a, it's a really interesting, tr I don't want to say trick, but it's a really interesting trick that you can play on people where if you want them to treat you a certain way and you present that to them first, a lot of times when they're into you or interested in you, right, that same quality that you've presented to them, that unique quality, they want to mirror that. 
I'm telling you, try it. Go to go on a date and be and and I and I don't want you to try to memorize the questions. I literally want you to say, I just want to I just want to bring out my phone because I wrote down a couple of questions that I really wanted to ask you because I'm like super interested in getting to know you more. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, the next few dates, if he really likes you, the next few dates, he's gonna come to one of those dates with some questions that he had for you. Trust me. And you'll start this snowball effect where both of you guys are trying your best to be invested in the other person. Trust me, it's, a, it's like magic how this happens. Okay, that's why I say to create questions, it will, it will, first of all, it will help some of you guys who have uh, social anxiety that feel like you can't, um, that feel like you can't have hold a conversation with people or talk to people for long periods of time, or you don't know what to ask, or you don't know what to say, you don't feel like you're charismatic or whatever it may be, right? It will help some of you guys remember what you wanted to say, right? Before, beforehand. And then when you get on the date, you won't be so nervous that, oh my God, am I going to remember this question? Or, oh my God, we got sidetracked. Am I going to remember what I wanted to ask him? And you can write down as many questions as you can think of. And the thing, the amazing part about it is when you start to create questions on your own time, you make questions that are so much more interesting, right? And it becomes so much more fun. I think someone just said, Adriana said, is a fun first date okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I, a fun first date is perfectly fine, but I would say at some point in the date, let it let it get deep. Like, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't want the whole date to be just fun and no deepness. So if you guys are going to, a I don't know, a bounce house for the date, let there be some time after the date where you guys sit down, maybe eat some food and have a real conversation. Don't let the whole thing just be fun, 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 fun. And you never get to have any deep, you know, heart to heart conversation. OK, so you want to create questions. Right. You, you you come up with questions about someone's background, right, their past, whether it be their past relationships or their life, the things that they've been through. Right. So that you can better understand who they are as a person. Right. So spend some time by yourself creating those questions. Now, I know some of you guys, what question should I ask? What's a question I should ask? I, I don't know. What, what are the questions? What are the questions? I don't know, Thompson. I don't know how to think unless you tell me exactly how to think and feel. And what, what should I say? What should I say? Relax. I'm going to I'm going to give you an example of a question you can ask. Right. That would be a really good type of question to go on a date with. OK, so you can write this down or you can screen record it, whatever you want to do to remember this question. I'm only going to give you one, though. The rest got to come up with on your own. OK, so, for example. What is an event in your life that was most painful to go through? but you think you learned the most from what do you think you learned you want to be asking and obviously this is after you've made it comfortable for them so you built some rapport you talked about some basic stuff you know what i mean you want to be asking questions after a period of time that are questions or or answers that he would feel uncomfortable giving to a crowd of people or a group of friends okay that's the that's the um, area that you want to be in in the types of questions that you're you're asking. They should be intimate questions. Assuming you're moving this forward the proper way, they these questions should get more and more intimate to the point where you're asking questions that you wouldn't even feel comfortable answering in front of a crowd of people or in front of a group of friends. Right? Those are good questions to be asking. Why do you think you go around and you see some people? Oh my God, they've been married for so long. Or oh my God, they have such a deep amazing bond or oh my god their relationship goals that takes work right that takes uncomfortable conversations right that takes intimate conversations intimacy is not just putting his pencil inside your squirtle for two minutes okay that is also a version of that not a version that also is intimacy asking those intimate questions and having intimate conversations about yourself your life your experiences, all of that stuff makes you and your partner who they are uniquely, right? So you need to be talking about those things. If you're truly serious about building a deep romantic connection with someone, you need to be talking about those things. And like I said, when you begin having these conversations with people, it'll be very easy to decipher who's serious from who's not serious, meaning the guys who are playing you from who's not playing you. I promise you, it'll be quite a struggle 
for the guys who are playing you to start having these deeper conversations with you. Right? Because you'll get, because even the guys that are playing you will understand that, first of all, they're not here to get deep. And also, it, it exposes them a lot more if they start telling you about who they are, what their past has been, what they think about, what their mind is on, right? Because it'll raise up all the red flags to you about who they truly are. And the guys that are playing you are trying to, uh, to keep this wall between you guys where you can't really actually see who they really are. Everything's a facade. It's all smoke and mirrors, right? Because if you were to actually see what's behind the veil, right, behind the smoke and mirrors, you'd realize it's all just a sham, okay? And the guys who are playing you don't want you to know that, right? That's why building a, a deep connection with someone or trying to is always a good way to get rid of the guys who are just trying to play you. They're not there to build a deep connection with you. So you're always going to find a lot of resistance. And even the guys who are just, you know, just um, placating you, right? And are just doing it just to do it, you're going to realize they're doing it just to do it, right? You're, you're, you're going to be able to tell. You're going to be able to tell, especially when you start trying trying to get deep. That's why I say the, the step before creating questions is to make it comfortable. And you make it comfortable. I'll give you an example, too. And I said this before by making it comfortable. You want to start off. If some of you guys are like, I don't know how to build rapport. I don't know how to do that. Start off. This is a simple way to build rapport. Figure out what it is they like, whatever their hobby is, whether it be football, basketball, softball, baseball, whatever. If they have a hobby or the fishing, whatever it may be, cheerleading, I don't know. And then you ask them, hey, I know that you're super into fishing. Can you teach me like if I wanted to start fishing, like how would I hold the rod or like what am I supposed to do? Like what's the technique? And just allow that person, allow him to teach you about whatever it is that he's most interested in or whatever it is his hobby is. Okay? Because guys love teaching you as their woman about something that they're already very interested in. Okay? Guys love doing that. Right? And it's a great way to start making him comfortable and getting him talking because he doesn't feel like you're interrogating him. Right. He feels more like this is a conversation and you just want to know more and understand better. So he answers your questions. Right. Unbeknownst to him that you're actually trying to, you know, use this as a segue to ask him deeper and deeper questions until you're no longer asking him about, you know, why is this a penalty in football? And now you're asking him, how does it make him feel that he never watched football with his dad when he was a child? Okay. And you can progressively get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm, I'm telling you, when you're doing it the right way, it's like a magic trick. People don't even notice. People don't even notice because they get so wrapped up in talking about themselves that they don't even realize they've been talking about themselves for so long. Does that make sense to you guys so far? Number five is eliminate distractions. We're going to get into very scary territory. Dinner dates are great. Okay. Going out to the movies is great. Going out for dinner, going out to the, I don't know, trampoline house, going this place, going that place. Cool. The fun dates are fun. They're amazing. Awesome. Great for building time, bonding. But at some point in your dating life with this person, okay. You guys need to have a dedicated, what I would call soul to soul connection, like a ther therapy time, a personal therapy. Your partner gives you therapy, you give your partner therapy, right? Like a soul to soul connection. What I mean by a soul to soul connection is a time where both of you can sit down in a quiet room. So at his house or at your house, wherever it may be. Because obviously in the span of you guys dating at some point, you're going to have to go to each other's house. Okay. So obviously this will be a little bit down the road. There has to come a point where you guys sit down in a quiet room and you have no distractions and you sit there and you talk. How many of you have ever been in a relationship or sorry, let me even ask it like this. How many of you, it is scary, the idea of sitting with someone in a quiet room 
with nothing else going on, just talking. Eliminate distractions as it relates to no TV, right? No cell phones, no lights, no games, nothing going on. No Netflix in the background. I know some of you guys just like to have Netflix or something playing in the background and that makes you feel comfortable. The reason I say that is because I know, you see why I talked about this texting and the phone addiction and the app addiction, right? For a lot of us, it's created this unnecessary social anxiety where we're so we're so um used to connecting with people over the phone we lose the ability to connect with people in real life and we're so used to having stimulants in our life all the time that to actually sit down in front of another human being and just talk to them not have anything else going on is scary and it's crazy it's it, it is crazy that sitting down and talking to another human being, just talking, is scary to, mo to most of us, to a lot of us. And the reason I say if you're really trying to build a deep connection with someone, you have to eliminate distractions at some point in your dating time, right? Multiple times. I would I honestly say frequently there should be dedicated time where you eliminate distractions is because this is the only way you can really get to know someone. Even if you're in the process of, of getting to know someone in a talking stage, whatever, and you're trying to be like, I want, I, I'm trying to see, okay, is this, is this guy, you know, someone I really want to be with or whatever, take the opportunity, either meet at your house or his house, if your house is more comfortable. And I want you to be like, okay, hey, today we're going to go on a, you know, we're going to have a date where we just sit down and we just talk, nothing else going on. And I promise you, your eyes will be open to what that guy is really about and how you really feel about that guy when you eliminate the distractions because a lot of times for you the distractions everything else going on all the stimulants going out we go out to eat all the food the this the that the music the dance the this everyone's yelling screaming and none of that allows you to be in touch with your intuition or your soul enough to really decide do i like you or not Am I feeling you or not? Do I like the way you talk, the way you act, the way you go about life? Do I like your approach? Do I like our connection or not? Because a lot of you are finding yourselves in relationships with people that you don't really like or you're not really attracted to or vice versa that don't really like you or aren't really attracted to you. And then you're sitting there wondering, damn, why, why don't I feel it? Or why don't I like this person? Or why does it feel like we can never, we're only really bonding when we go out to the club? Why does it feel like the only time we have fun is if we're going out to an expensive dinner, right? Or you're wondering why you just, you just aren't clicking or connecting with someone because you probably never did. But all the time you spent all this other distractions, you're like, oh, well, I'm having fun. So it, we, we must be connecting. Oh, we go out to the club and we get drunk. So we must be connecting right? All of the distractions are working against your ability to determine if someone is truly here for you. And if you're truly here for the other person as well, right? I know someone earlier in the chat said, I'm so bored. I don't even want to get to know anyone. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? If that guy is also not really truly interested in you, What's, what do you think is going to happen on that date where you guys sit down with no distractions? You think he's going to be able to sit through that and just sit and talk to you when he all he wanted to do was smash? No. So it'll be very... Wait, I told you, with these techniques too, you can also use it to determine, okay, is he really, is he really actually serious or is he just you know not, not really into me? He's just playing me. Because I promise you, the guys who are not actually interested in you and just want your squirtle, they're not going to sit down with you in a quiet room and just talk to you like therapy. They don't have time for that. That's no, they're not even interested enough in you to sit there and ask you questions about you. They're only interested about what you can do for, for them. Right. They're not going to sit there and have a conversation with you like that. Or they're, you're going to meet that with a lot of resistance. If you're if like if you're if you're confused about okay is is this person worth being my partner is this person worth being romantic with you should be able to sit down in a quiet room and just talk with your partner if that makes you or your partner uncomfortable you're not in the right relationship I'm gonna tell you up straight up 
you are not in the right relationship if that makes you or your partner uncomfortable the idea of you guys sitting and just having a conversation with no distractions like that is the essence of the relationship yeah you guys might have kids yeah you guys might have your big house yeah you got money yeah you're beautiful all that good stuff but the essence of your relationship should always be i can sit down with you in a quiet room with no distractions and just talk to you because I'm interested in you, because I care what you have to say, because I enjoy speaking to you. If that gives you anxiety or you're like, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. I, I don't know. It's going to be boring. We're going to be quiet for so long. And blah, blah, blah. you're not in the right relationship because that should not that should not be giving you extreme anxiety. Right. Even if you don't know what you're going to talk about, there should be an understanding that like, that's fine. Like, we'll just talk like the conversation is going to go somewhere. And I told you that you guys are so in touch with your intuition, right? But you never get a chance to hear your intuition when all this stuff is going on, stimulating you in the background and around you that you can't actually focus on how you feel. But in the stillness, when you're just sitting in front of him face to face, looking in his eyes, you're going to be able to feel what you're actually feeling. And you're going to be able to have more clarity as, oh, no, I, I am into you. I do like you. I, I want this relationship. You are the person. Or you might look into his eyes and you get in the feeling, oh, I'm super uncomfortable. I do not like this. I want to run. In which case you're not in the right relationship. But at least you'll know. Okay? You'll know. Because your, your, your intuition, your mind, your feelings, your gut, all of that stuff, it will speak to you. But it's a lot harder to hear that when you got loud music, you got people yelling, you got going out, you're this and that, you got friends, everyone's talking. You, you can't focus on how you feel when there's a lot of other stuff going on. Because the feeling that you have when, you're, when there's stillness and you're just spending time with someone, that will tell you a lot about how you really feel and, and you'll never forget that. And I think for a lot of you, you're, you're um, scared of what that feeling will communicate to you about that person or that relationship that you don't want to just be still. You guys have to understand, too, part of the game is the magic trick of, oh, look at this rabbit in front of your hat. You don't even notice that I'm taking your wallet, right? Look at the beautiful flowers. They're pink and red. Oh, I just stole your squirtle, right? That's part of the game is the facade of, Look at this and look at that and everything's bright and shiny and colorful. You don't realize that I'm just playing you, right? You don't realize what's actually standing in front of you, right? You don't see any of the signs. You're just focused on the bright and the shiny lights and all the colors and all the stimulus. Everything's amazing, right? But when you sit down and you have none of that going on, it's, it's, it's a lot harder for me to fool you. If I'm a magician, but I have I have I have nothing to no tools to utilize, right? To take your attention here and take your attention here and take your attention here. Now there's no magic trick. Cause the magic trick is just putting your attention somewhere else while I finagle and maneuver the magic. Or from finagle and maneuver the finesse, right? I put your attention over here while I finesse over here. Some of the guys who are trying to play you, they'll also, right, use that as an opportunity to say, why do we have to have a conversation? Why don't we just, yo, you look so pretty, girl. Yo, I'm trying to kiss your face type, right? And they're going to try to lead you in that direction so they can avoid actually having to have a real conversation with you because that's not why they're there. That's not why they're there. So why, why would he sit there and have a two hour long conversation with you when he could, oh, your lips look so luscious, girl. I'm trying to kiss you, girl. I'm trying to see what you about, yo. Um, uh, I can't shove my pencil inside your squirtle, girl. Uh, he's going to want to move it right back to where he wants the focus to be. Not on you guys having a silly soul to soul conversation. That's too silly for him. Number six is very important. This one's going to hurt your feelings. So I just want you to be mentally prepared. No drugs. I know that that consists of distractions and stimulus, but I wanted to make this a separate point. Because a lot of you get lost. A lot of you guys are wondering why you don't understand the guy or why he, how he's pulling the wool over your eyes. But 
every time you're around him, you're either high or you're drunk. And you wonder why you don't really know what he's about. How can you possibly know what he's about when every time you're around him, you're either high or drunk or you're participating in some sort of uh, 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 what you would consider an anxiety decreasing stimulant that you feel like, oh, well, it's not getting me high. It's not getting me drunk. It just helps me, you know, relax like vaping. Okay, I'm going to get mad for a second. I'm going to get mad for a second. So just prepare for a rant. Okay. Vaping is also a drug. Okay. Vaping is also a drug. It is also a distraction. You want to know why? Do you want to know why? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to get mad right now. Because when I go into the club. Okay. When I go into the club. And I live in downtown Toronto. So it's not like I live in the middle of nowhere, okay? IBC and the real stuff, right? I live in a big city. When I go to the club and I see people, right, like this, vaping. People be like, oh, but I vape. It's a head rush. It's a this, it's a that. Is it really? Because when I go to the club and I watch people vaping, they can't even, they got their drink in this hand. They got their vape in this hand. They can't even put their arm past 90 degrees because they're scared that the vape will be too far away from their mouth that they won't be able to get the next puff in the next 30 to 20 seconds. Does that sound like fun or does that sound like an addiction? Because if I showed seven-year-old you, a video of 20-something-year-old you scrambling around, losing your mind. Oh my God, where did I put my USB stick? I can't find it. Is it under the couch? Is it, is it in my coat? I can't. Guys, where did my USB stick go? I can't find it anywhere. I need to I can't find my USB stick. No, I can't go to the meeting or the appointment until I find my USB stick. Imagine seven-year-old you watching a video of 20-something-year-old you losing your mind because you can't find your USB stick. Okay? Does that sound like fun to you or does that sound like an addiction? Okay? And I'm not saying this because I want to make you feel bad about who you are, but, like, I want you to understand, right, the types of things you are doing, right, to distract yourself from feeling whatever it is you're feeling. Because rest assured, if you're going to tell me all the vape is doing for you is giving you a head rush, I can promise you, you're trying to distract yourself from something. Why do you need a consistent head rush? Why do you need the consistent whatever the feeling is that the vaping is doing for you? Because for most of you, the vape more closely resembles... It resembles less of a cigarette and it resembles more of a pacifier. Now I know you guys don't want to hear this. I know this is the talk you guys don't want to hear. Because when you're sitting here and the vape is in your mouth every 20 seconds and you can't put it down for a single second, and you walk around with it and you wake up with it and you go to bed with it and it's by your bedside table. It's, 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 it's way more than just a drug. That's a pacifier. That is literally a pacifier, right? And I know some of you guys are like, what does vaping have to do with my ability to build a romantic relationship or a connection? Vaping's not destroying my, rela my relationships. Well, think about it like this, right? If the vaping is comforting you, right? Or masking whatever feeling that you don't want to have if you're not vaping, then what do you think is happening when you're in a relationship trying to get to know someone, truly trying to get to know someone and understand them and, and build a connection with them? When your mind is clouded with whatever you're using 
to mask your ability to be present here right now and feel whatever it is you're feeling right now. Okay? I hate to get all philosophical on you and sound like a dad. I hate when I have dad talk. But a lot of the stuff that you're doing, participating in life, you're only doing it to make it easier for you to stop feeling what you're feeling right now, stop thinking what you're thinking right now, right? And escape to somewhere else, right? But when you're trying to build a real serious romantic relationship with someone, you need to be here and present. This is also why you're getting played. I know you're probably like, how is vaping helping me get played? Stay with me. Stay with the concept, right? Because they're all distractions, right? And it's part of the mindset of, oh, I don't want to feel whatever I'm feeling right now. I need something that will make me feel something different. Think something different. Take me to a different place. You cannot build a real connection with someone when your mind is always focused on how can I do something, take something, ingest something to take me to a different mental state rather than sit here and feel whatever it is that I'm feeling. Think whatever it is I'm thinking, right? I know it sounds so hippie. Oh, this don't make, oh, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about spiritual uh, hippie stuff. Uh, bro, I'm not going to stop vaping so I can have a better boyfriend. That don't make no sense. But I'm telling you, you guys be like, my intuition, my intuition, this and that. Your intuition is blocked when you're participating in all these activities to take yourself away from, from your center. Do you think you can be grounded while you're vaping? Do you, is that what you think? Right? And I don't mean to, to uh, diss all the vapors. I've seen some of you guys saying that, oh, I'm vaping right now. And I hate, uh, you, you guys know I'm the it's that deep person. I'm never going to be the, oh, it's not that deep person. I'm the, it's that deep friend that you have in your life. I'm, everything for me is it's that deep. Because really, that's how the world works. But we all want to convince ourselves, oh, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. And then we wonder why our connections and our friendships aren't that deep either. And when I talk about weed and when I talk about alcohol, it's a lot easier to understand. I had to, you know, get on vaping because some people think, but it's just vaping, right? Same thing way some people think, oh, well, it's just weed. It's just a little bit of a high. But why do you feel like you need to get high to be with someone? Why do you feel like, and some people be like, oh, but I have too much anxiety if I'm sober. Why do you have so much anxiety? Do you have anxiety being around the person sober? That's a whole problem in itself. If the person you spent, you plan on spending the rest of your life with you feel too much anxiety to be sober around, you need to reevaluate that relationship. Truly. Truly. You're going to spend the rest of your life with that person and it makes you feel uncomfortable to not be high around that person or you only feel comfortable if you're high around that person. How is that sustainable? Right? How is that sustainable? How are you possibly supposed to know what you're thinking and you're feeling if you're o about that person, if you're always high around that person or if you're always drunk around that person? I've had some people say that, you know, they always go out with someone and they get drunk with friends and stuff like that. Go to the club with their man or with their, their person that they're seeing. How are you ever supposed to know how you truly feel about that person if you're always drunk around them? Or whenever you guys get together, you guys always smoke. Oh, the smoking helps us have deep conversation. Does it really? Does it really? Or does it help you, you know, stop feeling the anxiety that you feel when you're around that person or just in general? Because some of you guys have anxiety in general. And rather than dealing with that internal anxiety and figuring out what in your life is giving you that constant anxiety, you just want to be high and not think about it. And then you wonder why your relationships aren't working when you haven't even fixed within yourself why you have constant anxiety all the time. I told you I didn't I didn't want to make this, you know, a super dad talk, but this type of if I'm going to tell you how to build real deep romantic connections, I'm sorry, I'm not going to tell you go around and get high with your partner all the time. You're going to have to just be able to sit down 
and talk with your partner and just have a conversation. I hate to sound like a dad, okay? Because I'm supposed to be just your friend. But like, that's the honest truth. And I'm not, guys, guys, I, this, is, this is where I even need to be more clear. I am not saying that as someone who's sitting on their high horse. Guys, you know, I can't believe you would ever vape. I can't believe you would ever smoke cigarette. I, I can't believe you would ever drink alcohol. Like, that's so disgusting. Like, I can't believe you peasants would ever do that. No, I'm saying that as someone like the first, how old am I now? The first 24 years of my life, I was not, I mean, not since I was young, but like, you know, being a teenager and then, you know, being in my early 20s, I was a drinker. I know everyone has their different things and I just took a dump on vaping, but I was a drinker. Every time I would go out, I get drunk. You know what I mean? Rarely I would be blackout drunk, but that was only because I had such a high tolerance for drinking. And so I'm an outgoing person. So if I go out two, three times a week or four times a week, sometimes then I'm drunk three, four times a week. Right. And I was wondering why my relationships and my friendships even weren't working in the proper in the direction that I wanted them to. I was wondering why I wasn't really able to build really deep romantic connections with people when most of the people that most of the girls that I ended up spending time with, most of the time we would always go out and I'd be drunk with them. So how would I ever know if we were building a real deep connection if we're always drunk every time we're together? Now, I quit drinking like a year and a half ago. So I haven't taken a single drink of anything since then. And I, and I don't smoke. I don't do anything now. I don't take anything. But I'm not saying that to say I'm better than you. I'm just saying that to say I've been where you are. So don't think that I speak from, oh, I'm on a high horse. I'd never take a sip of alcohol. And I've never, you know, used, uh, used uh, different drugs or alcohol to mask, you know, my feelings or whatever like that. I'm saying that because I've actually experienced that, not because I writ wrote about it in a paper. Okay. But I want to help you guys understand how serious this is. And number seven, we have keep notes. It is always a good idea. I recommend this is like a hack. Okay. When somebody tells you things about themselves, about what they like, whether it be like their favorite color, their favorite food, what gifts they've always wanted, a trip they've always wanted to go, go on, especially at the beginning of a relationship, especially if you're dating multiple people, even if you're not. It's always a good practice to keep notes of what that person likes and like just almost like a personal profile of like, okay, favorite color is red. They love tacos. They love spicy food. Okay, they've never been on a trip to Greece. They've always wanted to go on a trip to Greece. I'm going to make sure that, you know, if I get the opportunity to plan a trip to Greece or whatever it may be, you know what I mean? Right? It's always a good idea to keep notes of what that person likes, what they don't like what they're into, what they're not into, because what happens is you can call back to this when you're planning gifts or planning dates or whatever it may be, right? Because in the process of you dating someone and being in a serious relationship, like you're obviously going to have to reciprocate, you know, what they want and what they like. It can't just all be about what you want, but a great way to show someone that you're listening to them and you care about what they care about and what they want is to show interest in the things that they care about and then also recall the things that they've told you. You know what I mean? So this is this is even geared towards people who are already in a relationship. If you want to build back up that um, excitement of like being interested in each other and feeling like you're dating again, you can start keeping track of the things that they love doing and then just come one day and be like, you said you love fishing, so let's go fishing today. I got the fishing rods. I got us a boat, right? I'm not saying at the beginning you go out and you start asking guys on fishing dates. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm that's I'm talk, giving that example for the people who are already in serious relationships. But I'm just saying you can keep notes so that in the process of dating that person as you're building that deeper connection and that deeper relationship, right? You can be like, okay, I know what they like. I know what they're into. Because sometimes when you're talking to people or you're having conversations with someone, or especially if you're dating multiple people at once, whatever it is that you're doing, sometimes it can get confusing or you can start to forget the individual likes and dislikes of each unique person. And it's very um, touching as an individual when someone is listening to you, but also listening enough that you can tell them something and then days later, you know, they remember it. 
or even the fact that they care enough that when you tell them it, they write it down because they want to remember it, right? That also shows that you care a lot. And that also helps de build a much deeper connection, right? So keep a notepad or a notebook or put it in your notes, whatever their favorite colors are, gifts are, um, things that they enjoy, that they don't enjoy, hobbies, things like that. So you, you got a list. You know exactly what the playbook is on that person. You know what I mean? And then do the job of mentioning those small things, if you can, in conversations, just to remind them that you know and you care. Because like I said before, as you're building this deeper connection with someone and they see that you're that invested, they will also want to be more invested as well. It's like a snowball effect. You know, as you know, as you are with a guy and you see that he doesn't care, you were like, all right, whatever, I'm not going to care either. It's the same way, vice versa. When you're dating a guy and they see also like you, you care, like obviously like assuming that he's treating you well and with respect and he sees that you care a lot, he's even going to want to be like, I want to be even more invested in you because you take this relationship seriously. So I want to take it seriously as well. I'm not saying you do that to try to convince a guy to like you. I'm not saying do that. I'm talking about the guys who are already interested in you, already showing you respect. Okay. 